Senator Mastriano, please. Thank you, Senator Argo and Senator Ward. Thank you for being here and supporting this here. And welcome, everybody, to this most, most historic occasion and this most historic town. And what happened here in 1863, I think today we're going to see a turning of the tide because we have not really heard the truth of the arguments made on the other side on what happened. And when we're dealing with a government and the leadership in Harrisburg that wants to close their ears to what's happened during this election, and sadly, many in the media that are complicit and want to write off what happened. So for me, on this battlefield and remembering what happened 157 years ago, especially 157 years ago last week, where Abraham Lincoln gave his most famous address, and I think his final sentence captures why we're here today. He said that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. And everything is at stake in what happened during this election cycle. Everything. The republic is at stake. This is no game for us. And for any veteran in this room here who wore the uniform, such as Brigadier General Scott Perry, thank you for being here, sir. Um, uh, put their lives on the line here fighting for a country. And to see that there is a group in this state and country willing to throw away our valuable and precious freedoms here for power. You know, for me, there you go. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Mayor, it's going to be a fantastic hearing today. Despite pleas from our citizens, the governor refuses to even consider that there was any shenanigans in the elections here in our state, a state of 13 million people, and he wants to discount because his guy won that nothing bad happened, and that's just unacceptable. If there's any hint of fraud out there, we need to investigate. Any governor serving the people of this commonwealth would put aside his petty politics, would put aside his petty politics and find out the truth if anyone was defrauded. And at this point here, he's unwilling to do that. Let me point out some hard facts here. Uh, we are in Adams County, named after our second president, John Adams, who famously said, facts are stubborn things. Let me lay out several of these inconvenient truths, as Al Gore would have us think. There have been many allegations of uh, voting law violations across the state, and a governor serving the people would have to move heaven and earth to ensure no one was defrauded. But yet he's not moved to action. And even his secretary of state, of course, says that, that there was no shenanigans of great concern. And uh, I'll remind everyone that I was a no vote on, a, on the confirmation of Kathleen Bookvar four times that I interacted with her. I asked her, why are elections in Afghanistan more secure than in Pennsylvania? And she sat there and blinked and couldn't give me a straight answer. That, that, that elections are more safe and secure in a war-torn country, devastated by conflict since 1979. What is going on here? The place where this all started in 1776 and we can't get an election right? you got to be kidding me here. And so as a result of her inaction, the governor's inaction, refusal to even look into any of the allegations and to discount the, the very essential freedoms of our, our citizens, we are here today to try to find out what the heck happened in the election. You know, and likewise, our attorney general, our senior law enforcement official here, you know, instead of being focused on making sure things are lined up in, the, in kosher, before one vote was counted in Pennsylvania, the day before the election declared Biden the winner. I mean, it's, there's nothing to see here. Could you imagine if the shoe was on the other foot? Would the media be so gracious and merciful and kind if it was a Republican? <laughs> Absolutely not. And so, Houston, we have a problem here. You know... One of the most troubling things in this whole endeavor here, and it's not just because of the COVID, it's just a lack of transparency and accountability. So we're here to start shedding light on the darkness. And then, of course, we have a Supreme Court that rewrote election law. You know, Act 77 has been painted as a villain. Okay, we could debate that. But the real problem was is when the Pennsylvania Supreme Court decided they're going to write legislation and rewrite our law. And because of that, obviously, Pennsylvania, we got a lot of problems there. And that opened a door to all the shenanigans and abuses and folly that we're dealing with here in, in the state this day. So what's going on here? Thousands of people from across the Commonwealth have reached out to us, tens of thousands, uh, asking and demanding action. They deserve it. And as a result of the inability of our executive branch to do, do their job, we're stepping in here. We're co-equal members, and we're going to do our job. We're looking for transparency and truth. There's going to be no grandstanding here. We're after facts. And we're going to have a good layout here of what happened. And you're going to have to decide, good people of Pennsylvania, on what happened and whether there's a strong case we made or not. You know, the forgotten men and women of our, our great state feel betrayed by their government. And I'm with them. I feel the betrayal as well. 
So we undertake these proceedings today to find out what happened and then hopefully have come up with an approach where it never happens again. And the issues are galore. You're going to hear about poll watchers being denied access, where election software vendors refuse to testify before the General Assembly. What do they got to hide? Do we expect the people to trust their government? And we got to earn their trust. And this is no game. And the very republic very much is at stake. And anyone who loves this country has to put aside their petty partisan politics and allow the light to shine where, where it is. And we're going to find the truth and celebrate it. You know, as a soldier and now as an elected member of the state senate, I'm not going to stand aside. And neither of the members around me are as well. We're going to fight the good fight for freedom and secure our republic. Too many good men and women have gone before us who are given their lives here, and to cast it aside now for power play is unacceptable and it's not going to happen. Thank you. We do our great men and women in uniform and those who lay down their lives and gain the last full measure of devotion a great disservice if we stand aside and allow bureaucrats and corrupt politicians to steal their voice and maybe even steal an election. We'll find out. John 8, 3, thank you. John 8, 3, 6, 6 says that if Jesus sets you free, you're free indeed. We're going to walk as free people in Pennsylvania. This is where all started. We choose this day to walk as free men and women in honor of the sacrifice, not only of Jesus on Calvary, but also in honor of the sacrifice of brave men and women in uniform who fought for and secured our freedoms. We will be relentless in our pursuit of the transparency of accountability and truth. The time for dithering, politics, and games is over. The time for truth and justice is now. In conclusion, as Benjamin Franklin was leaving Constitutional Hall in 1787, he was approached by Mrs. Powell, and Mrs. Powell ran up to him. We surmise she knew him personally, and she said, well, Mr. Franklin, what do we have? A monarchy or a republic? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. This is our time to keep this republic. Thank you, and God bless you. I love Thank you, you, Senator Argo. Thank you for being willing to use your committee to do this hearing. So we pulled the trigger yesterday morning around 9 a.m., and look what happened here. And as Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> the truth's out there. Uh, media, you should have found these witnesses. You need to do your job. Now you see them out here. Do your job. You're essential to this republic, and without you doing your job, instead of being partisan hacks, this republic can't stand. So now you, you got some information, you got some witnesses with courage. These people are heroes to me. As a retired Army colonel, I look at them and I say, you guys are outstanding. Thanks for being a little step up. Because I am cognizant that the so-called tolerant people on the left will not show much love or tolerance to people they disagree with. And so thank you for standing, because you, you're on the, your warriors being able on, uh, to sta stand for and save this republic. So thank you for st going forward here. I mean, indeed, I started this off quoting from John Adams. We are in Adams County. You know, facts are stubborn things. Uh, there's a lot of hard facts out there. And guess what? As history and change in 1863 in Gettysburg back then, it's July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So on this day, history is changing for our country and state back at Gettysburg once again. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how this happened in America. We, we could send 50 years ago, you know, men to, to the moon, but we can't have a safe, secure election in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. What's going on here? It's got to be by design because we have the technology. We have stealth aircraft that are the envy of the world, but we can't run a, an election better than Afghanistan. Congressman Perry, you and I are in Afghanistan, and I don't know how in the heck Afghanistan has more secure, safe elections than Pennsylvania does. I mean, beam me up, Scotty. There's no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Really. We move heaven and earth with American dollars to secure elections in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere. We can't do it in our own state. It's by design. There's people in Pennsylvania not interested in safe, secure elections. And we have to correct this. There's two things that need to, ha need to happen. First off, we need to make sure that the real winner is sent forth from this, this presidential election. And number two... <laughs> Number two, we need to fix this. It doesn't happen ever again. You know, I can't believe, I can't believe we're having this conversation here in Pennsylvania. You know, this is the kind of stuff I hear about that goes on in Belarus under Lukashenko or in Russia under Putin, under, under Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Really? Here in our state? 
I mean, this is disgusting to me. You know, I watched when I was uh, in, doing strategy in Russia, you know, Putin's about people stuffing ballot boxes. The same thing that happened in Pennsylvania. When I saw that 15, 20 years ago, I was like, well, thank God we're not like that. What happened? What happened? And we're not going to let it stand. <laughs> you know, I saw, uh, you have to forgive people because we are a constitutional republic, so I'll forgive those that say democracy. But I saw one man had a sign in Philadelphia, and the irony wasn't lost on me. Democracy dies in Philadelphia. Can you imagine the irony of that? You know, where the light of liberty was lit in 1776, it transformed this world where, in this very same state, a new birth of freedom. And then, of course, let's not forget 2001, Tom, Todd Beamer, let's roll. You know what? It's our time to roll. This is no time. You know, democracy can die in darkness, in dark rooms with no transparency and accountability. We're shining light on this darkness here. We're going to take our state back. We're not standing aside in this hour. You know, as Representative Metcalf rightly said, in 1994, there was so much shenanigans and cheating in the Marks versus Stinson case that a federal district judge threw out the election results, took a senator out of Harrisburg, state senator, and put the Republican in because the election results were so corrupted. So we do have a precedent here, federal courts, and I hope you take a hard look at that here. Has our election results in Pennsylvania at the presidential and other levels been so corrupted that the results have to be thrown out? That's going to be a, a case you're going to have to make before the Supreme Court there, but it sure sounds like something stinks in Denmark or in Philadelphia. I don't know. You know, one vote, one person, one legal vote per person, and any cheating goes in there disenfranchises an American. And I can't believe this is happening here, and we're not going to let it stand. I don't know why it's so hard. You know, I know, I know it's, it's, it's hard because this has been going on here for a lot longer than we imagine. But in Galatians 6, 9, we're told by St. Paul, grow not weary doing good, because in due time you'll reap your harvest. We're going to reap our harvest. The time for dithering, <laughs> the time for dithering and deliberation is over. It's time for decisive action. We have to protect our commonwealth and our nation. The eyes of the world are upon us. And let's turn the commonwealth of Pennsylvania from a laughing stock to the pride of the world once again, as we have always had been and need to be again. <laughs> this is our day. This is our hour. This is our time. So yes, Mr. Franklin, a republic, if you can keep it, we're going to keep it. Can you keep it? Can you? Will you? We're going to keep the republic. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you all. We stand adjourned.